It's 11 p.m. and you're watching KCRA TV, where the news comes first. With Robert Hadlock, Carol Bland, weather with Greta Wenzel, John Malos with sports, and Northern California's number one news team. This is Channel 3 Reports. Topping our news, a 12-year-old Solano County girl has been released from jail tonight, but she is not home. She is staying with a family licensed to care for her. This is because the child refuses to testify against her stepfather in a child molestation case. Well, for seven straight days, Amy has gone to court and ignored questions about her stepfather, a Vacaville physician. And each time Judge John Duran has sent her to Solano Juvenile Hall. With her up until Thursday of this week, uh, at which time she'd been in six days in custody, and she has really deteriorated emotionally. But Amy's new attorney went to a higher authority to win her release. The Superior Court signed a uh, order directing that the county probation officers remove uh, my client, the minor, from the facility to a licensed care uh, home uh, in this county where she'll be kept uh, pending the further proceedings in the municipal court. Amy has indicated she will still refuse to take the oath. She is due back in court Monday, and a hearing to determine the legality of her detention begins Tuesday. A Los Angeles City councilman wants to know why convicted killer Dan White has been secretly released in that city. The councilman says police chief Daryl Gates did not tell city officials White would be set free in their area, and he says they should have been informed. Uh, I think that the people in Los Angeles will have to pay a heavy price for him being here. Uh, we don't want him here. I think that we might have avoided it had we been given notice and been able to register our protest. Councilman Wax, a gay activist, says three days before White was released from jail, L.A. Police Chief Gates was informed that White would arrive in the area. White was set free yesterday after serving five years for the 1978 killings of San Francisco Mayor George Moscone and City Supervisor Harvey Milk, a prominent gay leader. A spokesman for the City of Los Angeles says Gates simply forgot to tell anyone. The councilman is asking tonight for an investigation. The controversial fraud case that pits former TV anchorwoman Christine Kraft against Metro Media has now completed its fourth day in court. A television scriptwriter and friend of Kraft testified today that Christine Kraft often spoke about how Kansas City TV station KMBC tried to change her appearance while she worked there in 1981. Kraft claims that that violated her employment agreement. President Reagan is calling for tougher discipline in classrooms. In his weekly radio address today, he said we can't get learning back into our schools until we get crime and violence out. Mr. Reagan urged parents to find out what they can do to stop disorder and violence in public schools. Well, Sacramento Congressman Robert Matsui offered the Democrat response to this, saying budget cuts are part of the reason for a breakdown in school systems. Although the president focused on education in his message, Matsui moved on to criticize Mideast policies. He says they have turned deadly and that the release of Navy Lieutenant Robert Goodman shows we should aim more for diplomacy, not force. step toward peace is to bring our men home and defuse the hostilities in Lebanon by changing the American profile from one of a Marine with an M-16 to a diplomat with a real mission. As Matsui spoke, two more Marines were wounded in Beirut today. U.S. troops there are now on a Condition 1 alert. This is their highest state of readiness. Like Matsui, other prominent Democrats today level charges at President Reagan. They have come up with a blueprint for this election year. Today at a Capitol Hill news conference, former Democratic Party head Robert Strauss said the plan is a good one. It's my judgment and, and my prediction that their strategies for reducing the massive Reagan deficits and for reigniting investment in economic growth and for reviving arms control will really be at the center of the public debate as it moves forward in 1984. Among other things, the blueprint calls for tight controls on health costs, more money for research and development, and a flat tax to replace the current tax system. Up next...
Well, if you found today's foggy weather slightly overpowering and you thought you would categorize it under G for gloom, you're going to enjoy this next story. Our tip Kendall says there is sun and it's nearby. Gloom is right. More than a week's worth for those of us living in the valley. Sometimes low enough to be fog, other times just a cold gray canopy blotting out the sun and affecting our moods. It ruins my hair. <laughs> <laughs> How about you? Gets me kind of depressed. Just the pits. Just straight the pits. <laughs> what are you going to do about it? <laughs> We're going to drive up and see if we can find some sun. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> so off we went in our search for sunshine. Well, locked in the valley and in the fog, it seems kind of futile to try to find the sun, yet we know that just a few miles up the road, there it is indeed. Sunshine, blue skies, and white puffy clouds, all just half an hour's drive from Sacramento. It's times like these when the fog is thick in the valley that the drives in the country makes one appreciate the sun and the blue skies a lot more. Sun that warms the spirit as well as the face. Sun that makes one a little more willing for time to pass more slowly here. And we weren't alone in our quest. Many others also fled the valley floor to stand in the sunshine to look back at the cold, gray, fluffy blanket several hundred feet thick and several hundred miles long. And our weather experts indicate this may be our only look at the sunshine and blue skies from the valley for the next few days. So enjoy this while you can. From the sunny Sierra foothills, I'm Tip Kendall for Channel 3 Reports. And we're going to be looking up at that fluffy blanket for a little longer, huh? Yeah, at least till midweek, I would say. It's to about 2,000 feet, and it shows no signs of leaving. Tonight, we are reporting drizzle in the north end of the valley. We may see some here before morning. We have a weak frontal system moving through California. Look at color satellite. Three tonight shows that. It's moving through northern California, should be through by tomorrow morning, and it is an incredibly weak system. It's not doing very much, in fact, uh, may produce a few sprinkles up along the north coast, and that's just about it. We're not even expecting to see uh, much in the way of cloudiness over the Sierra Nevada tomorrow. You can hardly see it on the satellite picture. Storm number two is in about the same position. It is very weak, too. It will be heading through come about Monday morning. This one could be slightly stronger, but still, it looks like neither system will be strong enough to mix out the fog. So between now and about Wednesday, it looks like a continuation of foggy conditions with overcast skies. Current conditions, we have a temperature of 46 degrees, the humidity at 97%, no rainfall to report, and winds this evening are still light, too light to mix out the fog, and it doesn't help one bit. A look at our temperatures today, Barely any difference between overnight temperatures and afternoon highs. The high temperature today in Sacramento, 48 degrees, with an overnight low of 44 degrees. Stockton, 46, with an overnight low, low there of 42. In the north end of the valley, barely any warming at all. Marysville at 44 degrees, up a single degree. Modesto at 47 degrees. In the Bay Area, there was some fog early today. 54 degrees there are the high. And the mountain stations, gorgeous as you saw. 56 degrees, the high today at Lake Tahoe. Quick look across the nation today. Another nice day. A break in uh, weather that has been miserable for weeks on end. Sunny skies across the south with a few sprinkles of snow across the northern plains. A look at our forecast now in the coastal valleys. Tonight we're looking for the possibility of drizzle along with fog and overcast. Tomorrow afternoon, skies will be partly cloudy. In the Bay Area, we're looking for fog with local drizzle tonight. And Sunday, there'll be patchy fog in the morning, turning partly cloudy in the afternoon. In the Sierra Nevada, fair tonight except for local fog in the valley. Sunday will be partly cloudy in the north and sunny in the south. In the foothills, low clouds and fog at lower elevations, otherwise fair tonight and tomorrow. Highs in the 40s and foggy areas, but into the 60s in sunny spots. In northern Sacramento Valley tonight, low, low over overcast and fog. Sunday it'll be overcast and foggy with highs in the 40s to mid 50s. Sacramento, Stockton, and Modesto, fog and low overcast with local drizzle. Another gray day tomorrow with highs in the 40s. The extended forecast, very little change in the forecast fog and the possibility of a glimpse of sun once in a while. Back with more news and sports right after this. This is a sportscaster's moment, prediction time. I love this time of the year, more than the <laughs> Super Bowl, because we have two championship games. Mm -hmm. AFC championship, I'll take the Los Angeles Raiders tomorrow. Good. And my prediction on tomorrow's NFC championship game, listen closely, the San Francisco 49ers will beat the Washington Redskins, but only, and I say only, I hope you're listening, only if they can run the ball effectively and control the football. They must keep it away from quarterback Joe Theismann and the diesel himself, running back John Riggins. Dana McLemore must return punts well, giving the 49ers great field position, and the defense must force mistakes. Otherwise, forget it. Today in the nation's capital, the 49ers held their last workout prior to their showdown with the Hogs. 
Wendell Tyler, Roger Craig have only gained 1,581 yards combined this year, but Craig had some final thoughts about the skins in the NFC Championship. Basically, we try to uh, relax and, and don't, you know, get too tense and just kind of warm up, you know, uh, go over all the plays that we're going to run and, um, uh, and see how they're going to work. You know, that's the last, you know, chance that we can get them in. I feel, uh, we feel conf confident and I feel confident that we'll do okay. Um, you know, we worked hard all season. We had ups and downs and right now we're on the up, up roll and we'll try to keep it that way. On my early sports show, I interviewed former 49ers running back Paul Hofer and asked him if the 49ers have to run well to win. I think it's real important for the 49ers to establish a running game early in the game because uh, we, we do have t two talented run runners back there and uh, Roger Craig has done everything the 49ers have asked. Uh, Wendell Tyler is at a point right now that he's kind of uh, uh, conscious of the fumble. And if he has any openings at all it, it, in the early part of the game, I think he'll, he'll explode, and it could be a very good day for the 49ers. Tomorrow's AFC Championship game will match the misfits of the NFL, the Los Angeles Raiders against the young, enthusiastic, and confident Seattle Seahawks football team. Al Davis and his bad boys are heavily favored, but they're not overlooking Seattle. More in this report. As far as the Raiders are concerned, they just as soon forget their two losses to Seattle this season. Not only were some Raiders injured, but they turned the ball over to the Seahawks 13 times. That was two months ago, and the Seahawks have been on a roll since, winning their last four games. If the team has momentum, they come into the game and get a big couple of big plays and get on top of you, it's difficult to stop them. What we have to do is get the momentum first and get on top of them. They're a young team and uh, very confident in themselves and uh, very hungry too, so yeah, it makes the game exciting and it's going to make it tough also. While this is Seattle's first trip to the playoffs, the Raiders are veterans of postseason play. When we win a game, we go in the locker room and get undressed. When they win a game, they go in the locker room and jump up and down. It's that type of thing. You know, we're, we, we're, we're, we're taking this as a business. And lately, the Raiders have been generating some excitement of their own. We're in Los Angeles. Everybody's healthy. Our offense is playing well. Our defense is playing well. Both kickers are kicking well. And, you know, if we don't, if we don't take it as it's given to us right now, we really have no excuses. Even though the Raiders lost twice to Seattle during the regular season, they're favorites going into Sunday's playoff game. And they'll have to avoid looking past the Seahawks to the Super Bowl. You can't look past this game because uh, it's too big. It's too big a game, just like we didn't look past uh, the Steeler game. That was a big game. If you, if you look past it, uh, there is no tomorrow. And Matt Mellon says the Raiders will be ready. You have on this team, aside from a lot of nuts, a lot of professionals, really, and the uh, money's on the table, and call it greed, call it what you want, you got to get it. Dennis Kirkpatrick, CNN, El Segundo, California. Well, there was no loser in today's 59th annual East-West Shrine game at Stanford Stadium. The East beat the West 27-19, but 75,000 showed up, and the game raised more than $300,000 for the 22 Shriners Hospitals for Crippled Children. The East got on the board first. Buford Jordan of McNeese State scored from the three. Watch this beautiful catch coming up. Joey Jones of Alabama. I want to tell you, Wayne Peace of Miami makes a beautiful throw and a great catch by Jones. He was named MVP on offense. Cal's Ron Rivera MVP on defense. Also in the Hula Bowl, the West beat the East 21 to 16. Some say it was a silly joke, but the prank, if it was one, has caught the attention of the NCAA. During the Orange Bowl Monday night, it was announced over the PA system that a Miami player had scalped two tickets outside the stadium for 300 bucks apiece.